Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu during his khilafat besides one year in which he was unable to go he went every year for 10 years he used to go for Hajj every year Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned grave warning for a person who has the means to go for Hajj and still doesn't go for Hajj take care of the thoughts that occur and appear in your mind. Don't think bad, don't think dirty. Allah Pak is training us in Hajj, Fala Rafasa. Don't say anything Rafas. And perform your Hajj under the guidance of a scholar. Sometimes people don't know Messiah and they do silly things over there. Respected elders, brothers, we are going through the month of Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al Hajju ashurum ma'adumat. Hajj has some months which are well known, fixed. Everybody knows the months of Hajj. The months of Hajj are as soon as Ramadan finishes and we see the Hilal of Eid al Fitr, the month of Hajj starts. The time for Hajj begins. The whole month of Shabbal and the month of Zul Qa'dah and the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah are the months of Hajj. If somebody wants to put his Ihram for Hajj on, he can do so from the day of Eid al Fitr. If he wants to put that Ihram on in Ramzan or in Shaban or in Rajab, then it would be Makruh. Because that time is not time of Hajj, that is time for Umrah. Hajj time starts from the first of Shawwal. Now he can put it on if he wants to. And that is why the Fuqaha have said that if someone is in Makkah Mukarramah during the month of Ramadan and he is there on Eid al Fitr day as well, then it is necessary for him to stay there until the time of Hajj comes. Perform Hajj and then return home. Because he is there during the month of Hajj. This is when he has not yet performed his Hajj. Because Hajj is only first once in a lifetime. So if he has not ha, ha, if he has already performed his Hajj before, then it is not compulsory upon him to stay there. But if he has not performed Hajj, it's due upon him. And he's there uh, in Makkah Mukarramah on the day of Eid al Fitr or after that during the month of Shawwal, then he should not return without having performed the Hajj which is uh, further upon him. In this day and age, there is a problem of visa. The Saudi government don't let you stay there after Ramadan. If you secretly stay there and then you come after Hajj, then when you come to the airport, they see your passport, they give you some fine, jurmana penalty. So because of that majburi, maybe you, because of that problem, if someone returns, there won't be any harm in there. But he should make an intention that he will go and perform his hajj at the first opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, al hajju ashurun ma'lumat. Hajj has some fixed months, which are well known. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فَسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Whosoever makes an intention and fixes upon him to do hajj, then فَلَا رَفَثَ He should not talk any indecency. وَلَا فَسُوقَ And he should not transgress the commands of Allah. وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ and he should not quarrel and fight during the Hajj. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ Whoever fixes Hajj upon him, meaning he makes an intention. This is an indication that when we have the means to get to the house of Allah, then we should try and get there as soon as possible. We should not delay the Hajj. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Man arad al hajj fal yata'ajjal. Whosoever makes an intention for hajj, 
then he should hasten, be quick. فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ يَمْرَضُ الْمَرِيضُ وَتَعْرِضُ الْحَاجَةِ Sometimes a person becomes sick, ill. Sometimes necessities arise, problems and barriers are created. A person is unable to go there, disabled, wheelchair bound, unable to travel, old age, problems. Then he can't get there, he postpones it, delays it, year after year, year after year, time after time. And such a time comes that he's no longer able to get there. That's why he said, فَلْيَتَعَجَّلْ He should hasten and be quick. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled for Hajjatul Wada'a. And many, many Sahabas, when they heard that he is going, they wanted to give him company and you know, perform Hajj with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they also, through their zeal, traveled with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And along the way, from the villages and from the other areas, other towns, people joined the qafla and the caravan. By the time he reached Makkah Mukarrama, he had more than a hundred thousand sahabas around him. He performed Hajj and immediately after Hajj he came back. When he came back to Madina Munawara, he met, he met this lady sahabiya and he asked her, Ma mana'aki anta hujji ma'ana? What stopped you from performing Hajj with us? Why didn't you come for Hajj with us? And she said, Ya Rasulullah, we only have two camels in our home. My husband used one for the journey of Hajj and the other one we needed over here to water the fields and for our use over here. That is our only livelihood. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, okay, that is a valid, genuine excuse. Now, when Ramadan comes, then go for Umrah in Ramadan. Because an Umrah in Ramadan is equivalent to Hajj with me. Now the hadith shows that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wanted everybody to go to Hajj with him and as soon as possible. That is why he inquired from the lady that why did you not come to Hajj for Hajj with me? You should have given me company and you should have come with me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to encourage the Sahaba Ridwanullah Ali Majma'een to go for Hajj. And that is why the Sahaba and the Sahabiyyat, they used to travel for Hajj after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ummahatul Mu'mineen, the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they never traveled anyway. They stayed in Medina Munawwara. Only one journey they used to take and that was for Hajj. They used to go for Hajj every year. Sayyiduna Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, who is from the Asharay Mubashara, he used to take them. He used to provide expenses for them. All the Ummahatul Mu'mineen. He used to spend upon them, give them the, uh, uh, whatever expenses are needed, take them with a large group. They would all perform Hajj and he would bring them back to Medina Munawwara. They used to perform Hajj every year. The Sahaba used to perform Hajj. Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu during his Khilafat besides one year in which he was unable to go he went every year for 10 years he used to go for Hajj every year. Sayyiduna Usman Ghani radiallahu anhu used to go for Hajj every year for 12 years. He, the Khulafai Rashidin they used to be the Amir of Hajj and they used to conduct the affairs of the Hajj. They used to give the Khutbah on the day of Arafah. And under their instructions, all the Hajj would take place. So they played great importance, they paid great importance to Hajj because of these instructions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned grave warning for a person who has the means to go for Hajj and still doesn't go for Hajj. He has said, Man malaka zadan wa rahilatan. تُبْلِغُهُ إِلَىٰ بَيْتِ اللَّهِ فَلَمْ يَحُجَّ فَلَا عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَمُوتَ يَهُودِيًّا أَوْ نَصْرَانِيًّا وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ يَقُولُ وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Whosoever has the means 
and the right to get to Hajj. The provisions and the right to get there. And still, he doesn't go for Hajj, meaning due to laziness, delaying without any genuine reason. Oh, I'll go next year, the year after that. I have a problem. Moana Sahib, I have a mortgage. Should I go for Hajj? Or should I pay my mortgage first? Why mortgage Why did you take it in the first place? Then you come for ask for question. You don't want to go for Hajj and you're proving this obstacle over here that I have mortgage, should I go for Hajj or not? Some people say, Monana Sahib, I have money, but uh, I have to, you know, uh, I, uh, provide for the wedding of my daughter. Beti ki shadi karani hai, Monana Sahib, to uske liye paise jama ki hai. To shadi karau ya haj me jau. To bhai ye sab, shadi you don't need for wedding, you don't need 10-20 thousand pounds. Why do a huge wedding? Do a small wedding, go, you've got money, go for haj first. So these types of obstacles are brought. Monana Sahib, I have a job and my manager won't let me go. But have you asked your manager first? To ask him first. Tell him that this is my need. Please make a nice letter to him. Maybe Allah will put some rahim and mercy in his heart and he will give you permission. Okay, two, three weeks, no problem. Someone else will do you, will let you go. Some manager are very good, they will let you go with pay. No problem. You go, go. You're going for a good reason. So at least try, make an attempt, find a way out. You should try and go there and don't try and create obstacles yourselves and prove hundreds of barriers that I can't go there because of this and because of that and because of that. No, try and get there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whosoever has the provisions and the right to get there, but still he doesn't go, then there is no harm upon him if he were to die as a Yahudi or a Nasrani. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا It is Allah's haq and right upon the people that they make hajj of the house of Allah. Upon that person who has the ability to take the path to get there. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ and whosoever denies and rejects, then remember, Allah is free and He has nothing to do with Allah is independent. He is not in need of and from the whole universe. If the whole universe were to get together and transgress and rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were all to become like a fasiq and fajir and whatever you can esteem, understand, realize, then still that will not reduce an iota from the kingdom and the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum kanu ala afjari qalbi rajulin wahidin minkum ma naqasa dhalika min mulki shayya. Allah is ghaniyun anil alameen. He doesn't need our hajj. Our hajj is for our own benefit. So if you don't go for hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word over here, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ the indication is woman kafara. That is why the Prophet ﷺ said, he can die if he wants to as a Yahudi or Nasrani, when he's so lazy, he's got all the means, and he's still not going there. So, try and get there as quickly as possible. فَلْيَتْ عَجَّلْ As soon as possible. Those over here sitting in this gathering, or listening at home, you know, sit down, and make mashwara among your families, if you still haven't performed Hajj, get there very quickly. Buni al-Islam ala khams. Islam has five pillars. Like this masjid is standing on five pillars. If one pillar was demolished, the whole building would collapse. Similarly, these five pillars, shahadat, saum, salat, zakat, hajj, there are five pillars. If you demolish that pillar, one pillar, two pillars, three pillars, then you are demolishing the whole building of Islam. So, try and go there to the house of Allah and perform this first duty as soon as possible. May Allah give us tawfiq to practice. Also, my dear brothers, those who have been for Hajj and they have lots of money, wealth, and they are healthy as well. Allah has blessed them with health and wealth. They should also go there 
as much as possible. As much as possible. The hadith comes to mind, narrated by Ibn Hibban from Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu anhu, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith al-Qudsi, Inna abdan sahahtu lahu jismahu wa wassahtu alayhi fi al-ma'ishati tamzi alayhi khamsatu a'wamin la yafidu ilayya la mahroomun. Surely a person whom I have given good health in his body and whom, for whom I have expanded the wealth and given him in abundance. Five years pass by and he doesn't come to me. Then that person is a mahroom and deprived person. He is mahroom from the blessings and rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why we should try and get go there. If we have the means to get there, the energy, the strength, the health and the wealth as well. So go in abundance as much as you can for Hajj. If you can't go for Hajj because of old age, go for Umrah in Ramadan. If not in Ramadan, go for in Umrah in Rabi'ul Awwal. But we should have the love of Haramain Sharifain in our hearts. That is why there is a masla over here that if a person has let's say 5,000 pounds and he can go for Hajj. Nafil Hajj, he's performed his Farz Hajj, he can go for Nafil Hajj, and he can give that money in Sadqa, Khairat as well, then which is better, to give it to the poor, or to go for Hajj? Hafiz ibn Hajar, Hafiz ibn Rajab al-Hambali rahmatullahi alayhi, debates about this masala in his book, Lataif al-Ma'arif. And he mentions two calls, two opinions, from the Fuqaha. And, the one which he prefers and gives way to is the second one that this person should go for Hajj rather than giving it in Sadqa and Khaira. Unless there is a huge disaster and people are dying of hunger and thirst, then in that case he should give in Sadqa. Otherwise, he should go for the Nafli Hajj. He says that some people say, well, in Sadqa and Khaira, there is lots of sawab. Whereas in Hajj, you are doing it for yourself only. So Ibn Rajab gives the answer that of course, there is lots of sawab in sadaqah, lots of reward. But there is lots of reward in spending in the path of Hajj as well. النَّفَقَةُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِسَبْعِ مِئَةِ ضِعْفٍ Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, 700 times your sawab will be multiplied. You spend one pound, Allah will give you the sawab of spending 700 pounds. So, sadaqah you get sawab as well, in hajj you get sawab as well. And on top of that, on top of getting that sawab, you spend 3-4 weeks over there. You, you do many many tawabs. You do safa marwa sa'i. You go to Mina, you Arafat, Muzdalifa. You make du'as. You read Quran over there. You pray your namaz in Haram Sharif. One salah is equivalent to 100,000 salah. And you go to Medina Munawwara, you visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Rawdah Sharifa, and you say salam to him, you pray in his masjid, you stay there for 8 days, you pray 40 namaz. All this sawab is, it, it, it increases the sawab of that Tafal Hajj. So rather than spending in sadaqah, he should go for Nafli Hajj. As much as you can, this is the verdict by Ibn Rajab al Hambali Rahmatullah Ali. He is, I, I think he has narrated this from Hassan Basri Rahmatullah as well. Some of the tabi'in. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّةِ When you fix a hajj upon you, then you should go for hajj. And, فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ There should be no rafath, no fusuq, and no jidal in hajj. Rafath is any talk of sexual nature. That type of conversation which a person has with his wife in privacy. Once you don the ihram, you put on the ihram, then you should clear your mind, clear your tongue, keep them under control. Clear your thoughts. Never think about that line as well. Never say a word about that line. For the many, as many days you have the ihram on. 
for two days, three days, four days, you have the ihram, you should control yourself. Fala rafat. Don't think about that and don't say anything with regards to that in the presence of women as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is training us. Training us in ihram. Today, we live in a society, Allahu Akbar, which is so gandhi and filthy. Wherever we see there is nudity outside, our mind is boggled. We don't know what happens. There is so much fitna out there. We have to control ourselves. Control our passion, excitement, and control our desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Hajj is trying to teach us that you should control your desires, control your thoughts, and control each and every word that comes out of your lips. My Ustad Shaykh Yunus Saab, Dawad Barakatum, Maddafizum, Allah, Umarati Wong says that. I used to live in a village in India. We had a small masjid in our village. And uh, he was well acquainted with the Masail even from his childhood. So he says, the night I became baligh, I had ihtilam and I dreamed the need for ghusl. He says, I was really scared and I was really ashamed. My father would find out. I used to go for Fajr Salah every day. So that day when I woke up for Fajr Salah, I rushed to the shower, wash myself quickly, washed my lungi which I had worn, and I, uh, you know, hang, hung it for drying on the furthest place possible so that my father doesn't know. He says, then I went for Fajr Salah, I was sitting in the masjid, and my father came, and he saw me sitting at a distance as well. So he realized, he saw my lungi hung over there as well. So he came close to me, and he said, Yunus, اب اپنے خیالات کی حفاظت کرو that's the only nasihat he gave me he said Yunus now you have become balia mature so take care of your thoughts take care of the thoughts that occur and appear in your mind don't think bad don't think dirty Allah Pak is training us in hajj فَلَا رَفَسَ don't say anything رَفَث any talk of sexual nature any indecent talk Avoid that. Control yourself. Learn to control yourself. We need to control ourselves. And then he said, Wala fusuqa. No transgressing. Transgressing fisk means going out of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al khuruju an ta'atillah. Going out from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning disobedience to Allah. Transgressing, showing disobedience, rebelling against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in ihram, once you have started your hajj, your ihram, there should be no transgression. No disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Disobedience of the eyes, disobedience of the ears, disobedience of the tongue, disobedience of the hand, feet, taking someone else's property, eating someone's food, or going out there buying some fruit from someone and taking more and paying less. If he by mistake give you more change, you put it in your pocket without telling him. This is sort of theft. So this is all, you know, in the ihram. Think of what sin can I commit? Allah said, always avoid every sin throughout your whole life as well, but in ihram especially. Control yourself. La fusuq. Don't do any fisk during ihram. And wala jidala. No quarreling, fighting. Arguing. You know, some people's nature is to argue, argue, argue. They are very, very argumentative. And they can't, you know, control themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, once you start your ihram, then don't enter into fights, quarrels, arguments. Control yourself. This is wala jidala fil hajj. Three things you should control. Rafas, fusu, and jida. And then Allah said, وَمَا تَفَعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمْهُ اللَّهِ Whatever good you do, Allah knows it fully well. You pray some extra salah, you read some Quran, you do some zikrullah, you give some sadaqah and charity while you are in ihram, you help your fellow hujjajay kiram, someone in your group is elderly, you push his wheelchair, you help their relatives, you give them a hand, carry their load for them. 
you be a nice person, a humble person, this caring, sharing nature of yours, Allah said, Allah is looking at you. Allah knows whatever good you do. So try and do some good deeds while you are in ihram. And what tazawwadu fa inna khayr al taqwa. And take your provisions with you. And the best of provisions is taqwa. Meaning, you should have enough money to go there. Don't try and go around begging from people, stretching your hand out of people. Don't beg during the Hajj. Some people used to do that. They would come for Hajj from Yemen. And when they were asked, do you have any provisions? They say, no, our provision will be provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, if you trust Allah Ta'ala so much, then why you go around begging people? Why you go around asking people? This man got married, living with his wife, he has a few children, and then he says, now, you know, I want to renounce this worldly luxuries, pleasures, I want to go away and become Abid Zahid, and I have nothing to do with this dunya. And he leaves his wife, and he goes away. And he, you know, starts living this life of worship, ibadat. However, now, slowly, slowly, when he gets hungry, he goes around begging people, Hey, roti Allah ke naam par de do. Pai roti de do Allah ke naam par. And then, he goes around from village to village, carrying a whole bag. And in that bag, he has all his provisions. Khana, peena, roti, whatever he needs. Small chula as well frying pan as well, saucepan to make tea as well. And he carries that around with him when he goes around. So once he comes upon this house and he knocks on the door and he calls out, Ek roti Allah ke naam par de do, zara Allah ke naam par kus khana peena khila do. Give me some roti and bread for the name of Allah, some food in the name of Allah. And the lady in that house immediately recognized the voice. She was his ex-wife. And she rushes to the door and she says, Who are you? Said, what are you? Are you not that person? I said, Yes. Well, what happened to your renouncing of the world? You are carrying the whole world on your shoulders. You go everything in that bag. And then you're going around begging from people. What is this? This is not Zuhd. This is not Taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَتَزَبَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Take your provisions with you. And remember the best of provisions is taqwa. Don't go around begging people. Have enough money. Don't ask from people. Go on your own, with your own money and spend it in the path of Allah. Don't be stingy. Don't withhold your money. Spend it. Spend, spend, spend. Allah will reward you for that. And Allah said, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى The best of provisions is taqwa. We have developed taqwa within you. The aim of Hajj is to become a muttaqi and parhezgar person. Create and generate the fear of Allah in your hearts. And what taquuniya ulil albab and fear me, O oh people of intellect and understanding. Allah subhanahu wa taala goes on to mention some adab of Hajj. Laisa alaykum junaun an tabdagu fadlam min Rabbikum. فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَلِ الْحَرَامِ وَاذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ وَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّ You go for Hajj, you put the ihram on. From here, Heathrow, or from any other airport, if you are staying in transit, then you get to Makkah Mukarrama, you go to a hotel, put your luggage there, and then you go to masjid haram and perform your tawaf and sa'i. Learn the masail before you go there. Read some nice books. Go with some scholar, Maulana Ashraf Sahib. And perform your hajj under the guidance of a scholar. Sometimes people don't know masail and they do silly things over there. One poor ignorant person who doesn't know anything about hajj came from our Asian countries, old man, his son was abroad, and he sent him some money, that sent my father for Hajj. So the family put him in one group, and sent, took him to Bombay, and then from Bombay, they sent him in the flight. He comes to Makkah Mukarramah, he arrives at the hotel, 
And he starts taking off the ihram and wearing his clothes. So people are telling him, what are you doing, Sajjah? And he says, well, we are in Makkah now, so we can wear our clothes. Goes, no, you have to go to Haram Sharif first, and you have to perform your tawaf and say and shave your head, and then you take the clothes. Oh, I thought you get to Makkah, so you take your clothes off and put the normal clothes on. Not learning Masail properly, making mistakes. One Haji Sahib with us, Monana Bilal Sahib was our leader. Monana Bilal Sahib was teaching him to say Labbaik. Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. And he goes, Ballaik, Allahumma Ballaik. And he goes, Ballaik, nahi, Labbaik. Labbaik, you should learn Labbaik before you go. Don't twist the words around. So learn the Masail before you go for Hajj. We were going for Ramin with Monana Bilal Sahib. There was this Haji Sahib. Khash khashi dadi, smoking all the time. So, we were about to go for Jamarat, Rami. And he says, I'm not going for Jamarat. Why? My people get killed over there. You know, there's a stampede and everybody gets, uh, very many people get killed and they're really scared. I'm not going. So, but it is Rukun. You have to go. And Hafiz Ibrahim Sahib explained to him that you have to go. It's necessary. You have to pelt the stones. At the Jamarat, and he said, Okay, all right, then I will come. So he came, sat on the bus, we arrived at Jamarat, and the group is moving forward, and suddenly we look behind, and the Haji Sahib has disappeared. <laughs> we search for him, where is he gone? We wait for him, but in that huge crowd, thousands of people, where can we look for him? So we wait for a while, and then we just move on, so we can't wait to hold the whole group because of him. We do the Jamarat, tell the stones, we come back to Makkah Mukarrama. And what do we see? The Haji Sahib is sitting here with his legs stretched and smoking. I said, Kya? Kya? I was really scared. I caught the bus back under the bus and came back to the hotel. But you have to give them, okay, no problem, take this money and give the dumb. So, you know, if you go for Hajj with this type of attitude, without learning the Messiah properly, and you make mistakes, then your hajj will not be correct. That is why it is important to go with an alim and who can instruct you, guide you, and help you to perform your hajj properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these etiquettes, adab, that go to Arafat. فَإِذَا فَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَدِ الْحَرَامِ After performing your, uh, you know, umrah, in Makkah Mukarrama, you stay there for a few days and then the time of Hajj comes and you go from Makkah Mukarrama to Mina and you stay in Mina for 24 hours. You pray 5-6 namaz over there and then on the morning of the 9th, you get to Arafat. And in the Maidan of Arafat, MashaAllah, in Makkah Mukarrama, you had your luxury, beautiful nice hotel, air conditioned rooms, and you know everything according to your need. However, now when you get to Mina, then you might have that air condition, but the luxury of the room, luxury of the room and the bed and the pillows is gone. It's taken away from you. And then when you get to Arafat, there is no bed and no mattress and no air condition as well. You might have some fans over there and that is the heat is scorching, but over there you only have fans, you have to survive on the fans. And then when you depart from Arafat to Muzdarifa, there is not even fans as well. There is no tent as well. You are sitting under the roof of the sky. You are sleeping under the roof of the sky in that open area, that huge field and that maidan and that desert. What is Allah Park teaching us? What message is Allah Park trying to give us in this? Allah Park is trying to teach us that, you know, this attachment with this dunya is a, a, a hindering and blocking, blockage for us. Try and get rid of it. You leave your home, over here you leave your relatives, and you go on the aeroplane, you are bidding farewell to everyone. Just as at the time of death, you will bid farewell to everyone. Similarly, you are going on this journey. You are leaving your luxury, then you are leaving luxuries over there, and so forth. 
So you finally you come under the roof of the sky in Muzdalifah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that you know, take yourself away from this dunya. Minimal provisions are enough for you. Don't fall for the luxuries and pleasures of this dunya. Your heart should be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know do zikr and fikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah said, فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَدِ الْحَرَامِ وَاذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ وَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّينَ When you leave from Arafat, then remember Allah near Al-Mash'ar Al-Haram. Meaning you have remembered Allah in Arafat. Because in Arafat everybody is busy reciting Quran, making du'as, reciting the fourth kalima, la ilaha illa wa'adhu la sharika wa la ilaha illa wa'adhu Reciting Qul Allahu a'ad hundred times, fourth kalima hundred times, Duru Sharif hundred times, as the wazifa is mentioned in the hadith of Bayaqi. We recite that wazifa, we do lots of zikrullah. But then when it's Maghrib time, we are a bit tired and we get to Muzdalifa. Then in Muzdalifa, everybody falls asleep because they were really tired in Arafat. They got no sleep. So in Muzdalifa, everybody goes to sleep the whole night until Fajr time. And after Fajr as well, everybody gets starts packing to go to Mina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't, time, say, don't, don't waste your time in Muzdalifa. Remember Allah in Muzdalifa as well, just as you remember Allah in Arafat. فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ وَذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاهُ In Mash'ar al-Haram as well, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray some tahajjud at night. Some people today say that the Prophet sallallahu didn't pray tahajjud in Muzdalifa. So we will only pray tahajjud. We will only pray fajr namaz, two sunnahs and two farz. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't pray tahajjud in there because he did not want to put his ummah into any hardship. If he would have prayed tahajjud over there, then the tahajjud would have become farz or wajib upon the ummah. But he wanted to make, create ease for his ummah. That's why he didn't perform tahajjud over there. Otherwise he performed tahajjud throughout his whole life. Now if we pray now, nothing is going to become farz because of our praying of tahajjud. Sahabas prayed it, Sahabiyat prayed it, Tabi'een prayed tahajjud. They used to perform tahajjud. They understood the deen better than us. So today you will get these people. Who say that you shouldn't pray sunnah in Safar as well. So while we are in Makkah and then in Mina and Arafat, Muzdalifa, they say you only pray the uh, Faras. Only two Faras of Fajr, only two Faras of Zuhar because Musafir, only two Faras of Asal because Musafir said no sunnah. Maghrib, no sunnah, only Faras. And if someone does pray sunnah, they stop him. That, Oi, why are you praying sunnah? It's not right, you shouldn't pray sunnah in Safar. Allahu Akbar. This Safar is of two types. One is when you are on the run. The journey is going. You are at the airport. You are at the railway station. You are at the bus station. You are at the cafe on the motorway. Then in this condition, you are allowed to leave your sunnah. Even though if you were to pray sunnah in that condition as well, you will get great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second condition is when you are in a state of calmness. When you are staying at place for a day or two or a few days. When you are staying at one place for a day or two or a few days, then you should pray your sunnat. Yapni habit kharab ni karnegi. Sunnat chordnegi. Adat pardegi sunnat chordnegi. So don't abandon the sunnat while you are staying there in Mina and in Arafat, in Muzdalifa. You should pray your sunnat. You should pray your nawafil. You should pray your tahajjud. And do as many ibadat as you can. And don't listen to these people who say that no, you shouldn't pray sunnat in Safar. When you are staying calm, you should pray the sunnat. So pray tahajjud in Muzdalifa and also remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ الْمَشْعَدِ الْحَرَامِ وَذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّينَ ثُمَّ أَفِيضُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ وَفَاضَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمِ then go from wherever, where the people depart and go and seek forgiveness from Allah because Allah is غفور الرحيم Meaning when people go from Muzdalifa to Makkah Mukarramah, to first to Mina and they perform their Qurbani and then shave their heads and then go to Makkah Mukarramah for tawaf ziyarat then go and perform all those rites with the, with the congregation and seek forgiveness from Allah. Inna Allah ghafoor rahim And then Allah said, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا When you complete your manasik and your rituals of hajj 
then remember Allah as you used to remember your forefathers. In fact, be more vigorous in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aw ashadda zikra. Meaning, when the time of Mina, the three days of Mina, the 11, 12, 13, the three days of Mina, you are staying there, then in those days, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as you used to remember your forefathers, in the time of Jahiliyyah, the pre-Islamic era, people used to get together in that Mela, and uh, uh, in that festival, and they used to have stages, and they used to bring poets who would sing poetry in praise of their forefathers, in praise of their tribes, in, uh, 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 and, uh, you know, uh, praising them beyond limits. They used to say such things which never, uh, you know, such qualities which were never present in their forefathers. They were so brave and they were so generous and they were so sakhi and they were this and they were that. And they were sifar, zero, nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you used to love your forefathers, you used to sing their poetry. Allah said, just as you used to sing, sing that poetry with great zeal and valor, remember Allah in that same manner, in fact, aw ashadda zikra. Aw means bal, bal ashadda zikra. Remember Allah with more shiddat, more vigorously. This shows that the aim of taking us to hajj, for hajj of Baytullah is also to do zikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah. The aim of salat is also zikr, the aim of psalm and zakat is also zikr, and the aim of hajj is also zikr. So zikrullah is a great blessing. May Allah give us tawfiq to remember Allah at all times. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, make dua. Some people don't know how to make dua. And they say, Rabbana atina fi dunya wa ma lahu fil akhirati min khalaq. Oh Allah, give us all the goods in this dunya. I want money, I want a good car, good house, good wife, good job, good business, prosperous business. They only ask for this dunya. They don't even think about the hereafter. Allah said, ma lahu fil akhirati min khalaq. They will have no share in the hereafter in the akhirah. Huh? There are others, the believers. Who say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab al nar. Allah give us good in this dunya and give us good in the hereafter. We want the good and the blessings in both worlds, in dunya and in akhirat. And wa qina azab al nar. And save us from the fire of Jahannam and from the azab and punishment of the fire. Allah said, These are the good people. Ulaika lahum nasibum mimma kasabu. Wallahu sariyu al hisab. They are the ones who will get a fair share of whatever they have earned. Whatever hard work and effort they did, Allah will give them the reward and sawab for that hard work which they had done. And Allah is swift in reckoning. Again, Allah for a third time says, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ And Allah, remember Allah in the days which are counted, meaning the days of Mina. فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنْ اتَّقَى وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Fear Allah and know that it is to Him that you will be gathered on the day of Qiyamah. So remember that hashr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how this half ruku with regards to hajj comes so close. So my dear brothers, concluding the talk, as we mentioned in the beginning, those who have not gone for Hajj, make an intention to go there. Will you go inshallah? Make an intention. If you do, go away from here and then ponder, make mashwara among your uh, household, family members, wife, and get together and think that Hajj is farz upon us, we have not been there, then let's go and perform this duty. Inshallah, Allah will open the path and way for you and take you there. Those who have been there and they are healthy and wealthy, they should go there as much as possible, as frequently as possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the barakat of Haramayn Sharifain and the blessings of Hajj as well. And when you go for Hajj, then you know, perform the Hajj in a proper manner in which Allah said, فَلَا رَفَثْ وَلَا فُسُوقْ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجْ And you know, behave properly, then you will get the proper thawab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ حَجَّ لِلَّهِ فَلَمْ يَرْفُثْ وَلَمْ يَفْسُقْ رَجَعَكَ يَوْمٍ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ Whosoever goes for Hajj with ikhlas, sincerity for the sake of Allah, and he does no rafat and no fusuq in that Hajj, he will return in the same manner as he was the day he was born, he came out of his mother's womb. 
Meaning, all his sins will be cleared and wiped out. This is why some ulama says that Hajj not only removes the sagair minor sins, Hajj also removes the major sins as well, the kabair as well. أما علمت يا عمر أن الإسلام يهدم ما كان قبله وأن الهجرة تهدم ما كان قبلها وأن الحج يهدم ما كان قبله Islam abolishes any sins committed before it Hijrat and migrations abolish and wipe out any sins committed before it and Hajj abolishes and wipes out any sins that were committed before it Another hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said العمرة إلى العمرة كفارة لما بينهما One عمرة after another umrah wipes out, it expiates any sins committed in between. You went for umrah in Rabiul Awwal, and then you went for umrah in Ramadan. So if you did any mistakes in between, the umrah of Ramadan will wipe it out and expiate it and clear it out for you. And wal hajjul mabrur laysa lahu jazaa'un illa al-jannah. For hajjul mabrur, there is no reward except for jannah. Straight Jannah. After Hajj Mabrur, you die, you will go straight into Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tabi'u bayna al-Hajj wa al-Umrah, fa'innahuma yanfiyan al-Faqr wa al-Dhunub, kama tanfi al-Qeer wa khabas al-Hadid. Perform Umrah and Hajj successively. Because they both get rid of poverty and sins, just as the furnace gets rid of the rust of the metal. When it's heated up in that metal is heated up in the furnace, it's, it's, it's cleared of all the rust and it comes out stronger. So similarly, you go for Hajj, you will be cleared of your sins and your ruhaniyat and your spirituality will be strengthened and enhanced and you will get that nur and jila in your heart after the Hajj. So this is why performing Hajj is extremely important. So all those brothers and sisters who have not been for Hajj, make an intention to go there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you and take you there with great ease and give you and all the hujjaj who are going, give them all Hajj Mabrur and accept their Hajj.